Let's take a look at solving another system of three equations and three unknowns. You always want to make sure that you have your variables lined up, which we do. They are all in standard form, ax plus by plus cz equals d. If you have coefficients that are fractions or rational numbers, that would be the next thing you'd want to take care of, clearing any decimals or fractions. So just again, to keep reference, I'm going to number these so we can keep track of what equations we're talking about. And equation number one, let's get rid of that denominator of three by multiplying every term by three. That transforms it into three times two thirds x would cancel out the three leaving just two x. 3 times 2y is 6y, 3 times minus 2z is a minus 6z, and 3 times 8 is 24. The second equation has a fraction with a denominator of 3, so I'm going to multiply every term by 3 there as well. 3 times 3x leaves us with a 9x. The 3 cancels out the 1 third, leaving a 1y. 3 times z is 3z, and 3 times the negative 6 leaves us with a negative 18. So here's the new versions of 1 and 2. And then we begin by trying to eliminate one of the variables. I'm, my goal is to have this in that triangular form. I'm actually going to leave equation number three alone with the three variables, but I'm going to use it and combine it with one and two to eliminate the x's in each of those two equations. So to start off with, I'm going to multiply everything in equation number three by a negative 9. And then I'm going to add it to my new version of equation number 2 to eliminate the x's. So let's see what we get by multiplying every term by negative 9. We are going to get negative 9 times x is negative 9x. Negative 9 times negative 3y is a positive 27y negative 9 times positive 2z is a negative 18z, and negative times a negative is positive, 9 times 19 is 171. I'm now adding equation number 2 plus a negative 9 times equation number 3, and I'm going to call it the new equation number 2. The x's cancel out, y and 1y and 27y makes 28y, 3 and negative 18z's gives us a negative 15z, negative 18 plus 171 is 153. I'm going to slide that in here in our slot for the altered equation. So here's equation number 2, the new equation number 2. And then I'm going to return to equation number 3, add it to our newest version of equation number 1 so that the x term cancels out on that sum. So I need to have a negative 2 on the x term. So I'm going to take equation number 3, multiply every term by negative 2. So negative 2 times x is giving us negative 2x, negative 2 times the negative 3y is going to give us a positive 6y, negative 3 times, try it again, negative 2 times 2, sorry about that, is a negative 4z, and negative 2 times our negative 19 is a positive 38. I'm going to add it to our equation number 1 that was altered getting rid of the fraction. So I'll write that here so we can keep track of it. 2x, 6y, 
minus 6z equals 24. When we add, the x's are gone. That was the goal. 6 and 6 make 12y minus 4 plus a minus 6 is a minus 10z. And when we add, we end up with a 12. How about a 62? If you can reduce uh, fractions, sometimes that's a good idea, or I should say equations, by dividing through by a common factor. And at least every one of these is even, so we could divide every term by 2. For our new version of equation number 1, new number 1, which gives us a 6y minus 5z equals a 31. It's just smaller numbers to deal with and ultimately, hopefully, is going to help us avoid some arithmetic here as we go along. So we're almost in that triangular form. All we need to do now is, is work with these two equations and eliminate one of the variables. Now we could work to get a common factor between 28 and 6, or we could find a common factor between 15 and 5, and I think most would agree that that's probably the easier way. So I propose taking what we're calling equation number 1, multiplying it by a, I need a sign change, so I need a negative, and to bring the 5 up to a 15, I need a 3. I'm going to multiply my, what I'm referring to as equation number 1, by negative 3 and I will add it to equation number 2 with the idea of eliminating the z's and then being able to solve through on this system. So, equation number 1, every term multiplied by negative 3 gives us a negative 18y, a positive 15z, and a negative 93. Equation number 2, I didn't do anything with. I'll write it below this. And if we've done this correctly, adding these together, we end up with a positive 10y. The z's are gone. They cancel out. Negative 93 plus 153 leaves us with 60. And we end up with y is equal to 6 when we divide both sides by 10. So it appears these three planes intersect in a point. We have our y coordinate. Once we have y, or one value, we can work our way back up by plugging that in and solving for another variable and then another variable. So I'm going to use this equation, since it has y in it and only one other variable, to find what the z is. So replacing the y with the value I just found, minus 5z equals 31. I'm using equation number 1. I have a 36 minus 5z equals 31. Subtract a 36 from each side, leaves us with a negative 5z. 31 minus 36 is a negative 5. Divide by negative 5 on each side, and we have a z equals 1. We now have two of the three, and you can choose any one of the equations that you want. I'm going to go to equation number 3. It Seems to have the smallest numbers, perhaps, and replace the variables. So we have x minus 3 times y, which we found to be 6, plus 2 times z. We've solved and found it equal to 1. And the equation says that that results in a negative 19. Simplifying, we'll multiply first. 3 times 6 is 18. Multiply. Simplifying the left-hand side by combining like terms, and negative 18 plus 2 is negative 16. And then to get x by itself, we'll add a 16 to both sides, and x is equal to a negative 3. Regardless of the order that you find your ordered triple, be sure you always express your answer in x, y, z form. So x we found to be a negative 3 y is 6 and z is 1. This is the point that's common between these three planes.